A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I'm glad that you're with us on the program today. We've got two guests for you. Coming up, uh, Kurt Slichter is going to join us, townhall.com columnist. Also, uh, Alan Gottlieb, founder, executive vice president of the Second Amendment Foundation, will be with us as well, talking about what happened in Washington, D.C. yesterday, uh, why this happened, how we got here, where we go from here, uh, and what kind of impact the uh, storming of the Capitol is going to have on the uh, fight for our right to keep and bear arms. Got to tell you, pretty much everybody that I've talked to, from uh, Tom Gresham, uh, host of Gun Talk, to Alan Gottlieb, have, have said this is not going to be good uh, for our right to keep and bear arms. This is going to embolden anti-gun politicians. You may very well find some uh, Republicans who are now willing to uh, you know, take moderate steps to protect the public safety, which I think would be a disastrous move. Tucker Carlson uh, talked about this in his monologue on Fox News last night. This this cycle of political retribution that we are in and that we have been in for quite some time. And the only way, as hard as it is, the only way to start to fix the problem. And as Tucker said, you got to fix the problem here. We, we were not. We live together. That's not changing. But the only way to fix the problem is if both sides, and at this point, we might even be talking about more than just two sides. Maybe it'd be more accurate to say if all sides want to fix the problem. And that, I think, is a big hang up. Because speaking generally, our political process involves far more finger pointing than looking in the mirror, right? I mean, we see this, and we'll talk about this with the Kurt Slichter, but we see this just with how the media covered riots all summer long versus how they covered the storming of the Capitol on Wednesday. We don't, we, we still are so tribal. It's still about Team Red and it's still about Team Blue as opposed to being about the Red, White, and Blue. And I don't know, I, listen, this is, if you're, you know, tuning in, hoping that I got the perfect answer, I don't, I don't have the perfect answer. I don't, I don't have the solution because, again, I think a lot of that, it can't be touched by legislation, right? We're talking about changing mindsets. We're talking about changing priorities. We're talking about changing our focus here in how we conduct our politics. That's a heavy lift in the best of circumstances. But when you've got parties that are basically on a political war footing with one another and are more interested in how do we punish those folks as opposed to how do we figure out a way to live together? I have to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not, I wish I was optimistic that things were going to get better in the short term, but I'm, I'm not because I don't know that we have the national will at this point in time to make it any better. So on that cheery introduction, let's uh, start our conversations with Kurt Slichter, town hall columnist who joined me uh, earlier today with his thoughts on what happened in Washington on Wednesday. Take a look and a listen. Kurt Slichter, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program today. It's good talking with you. Thanks for having me. So uh, I guess, you know, first question, what the hell, man? What? <laughs> <laughs> Anything in the news? Um, yeah, uh, I've been... Uh, Looking at this uh, uh, thing for about 24 hours, you and I actually talk offline. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm feeling uh, my feelings are important. And now, I, now where I am now, I can look out my uh, window of my palatial corner office. And I can see over South Central LA, which was on fire when I was there in the riots, in uh, the Los Angeles riots in 91. And I got to say, I'm getting. Uh, Yes, this stuff was bad. No, it wasn't the apocalypse. Uh, I think if that police officer in what's going to be a controversial shooting had not shot that woman, I think uh, uh, it, it, some of it might actually be. Uh, 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 I mean, I mean, you look at the meme of the guy with a Viking hat sitting in the speaker's chair, and it seems seemed almost like ridiculous performance art. 
Unfortunately, somebody got killed doing it. Um, the overblown ideas that this was some sort of coup and you know we're trying to retake the country, you know, steal the country after and then of course Twitter has this endless series of occupied capital and state house photos. It's just I, I, I you can think something is bad and you can also understand it's not Armageddon and that you need to put it in perspective. And I think a lot of people are going to be, I think a lot of people have uh, uh, some complicated feelings about this whole thing. And I think, I think if they try and milk it too much, you're going to get a, whoa, 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 you know, enough of that. But uh, our leadership is, uh, our ruling class is stupid and unwise. And they're going to think, well, we need to crack down now. We already have a, what, uh, Jeff Zuckerberg, uh, or Mark Zuckerberg, um, uh, uh, banning the president from Facebook for two weeks. Of course, if he can ban him, he can ban anybody. And, um, you know, I, I want to reaffirm that there's no, you have no reason to be protesting a double standard. And I'll prove that to you by, our, by imposing a quadruple standard. Yeah. I mean, you know, and look, and as you say, there there are our media is really bad at complicated issues, right? We love our simple narratives. Um and so, you know, you and I have both said uh that what happened yesterday uh was not good. It's not good for the country, it's not good for the conservative movement. It's uh, certainly not good for uh Donald Trump and uh, his legacy. It's not good. Um but you know, I, I saw the same uh, old headlines that you did, Kurt, going back to the summer where I think it was uh, German Lopez at uh, Vox talked about, uh, you know, the headline was something about, you know, we should listen to those who are rioting. Yes, riots are bad, but we should listen to those who are who are rioting so we can learn why it's happening. Uh, and then yesterday the headline was arrest everybody. Right. We well, don't need to listen to them. And mm -hmm. and and this is the problem. And, and, and you mentioned this and Tucker Carlson talked about this in his monologue last night. Uh, I wrote a little bit about this at Bearing Arms today as well. You know, we can all agree, oh, this is bad. Uh, and we can all agree, you know what, this was not an isolated incident. This is this is part of a cycle that has been yeah. going on for years, if not decades. But, you know, until both sides are ready to de-escalate and to place themselves off of a war footing in terms of the, you know, political retribution uh, that they want to inflict on their ideological opponents, this keeps happening. I mean, that, that's, that's just the long and short of it. It can't not keep happening. I mean, have these people never met other human beings? Uh, you know, we've got a whole bunch of military guys in there. The, uh, the most basic rule of insurgency is insurgents like to provoke the authorities. They provoke the authorities to get an overreaction. The overreaction spins more people into their uh, into the insurgents' uh, uh, corner because they they they've now seen okay. I now feel I have no alternative but violence, and you know I I I'm horrified by the thought that these ideologues backed up by idiots uh, in the GOP decide well we better we better do something. We better, we, we better ban guns now. And then, you know, holy crap. Now, now you've got a whole bunch of people who are going, well, that's bad. And, 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 and absolutely polarize it. Now, the, 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 the smart thing would be Joe Biden walking out saying, I want to unify. And to show that I'm serious, you know, I'm going to do, I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z that people have said. I'm not going to pack the court. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you don't have to worry. It's time for everything to de-escalate. I'm going to encourage a, a civil uh, discourse as opposed to civil conflict. I want, and I'm going to, and you know, I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling uh, Mark Zuckerberg and I'm saying you got to stop. You got to stop silencing people who disagree with me. I know you don't like them. I don't like them either, but. I can't have a system where one side feels it has no avenue to express itself. And I'm going to appoint an election commission. I think the election was absolutely fair. 
But I'm going to join an election commission with people from all stripes uh, to go in and take a look and see how we can do better. And I want to put people's mind at ease. So that's my, that's my plan. I'm the guy asking for unity. I'm going to make the first steps, hold me to them. And I think people would go, eh, I don't know if I believe him. But if he holds to them, people would go, okay. Because people want to get back to a system where we had a civil society. But if, if, if your choices are civil society, leftist oppression, or we fight back, you know, A and C are potential options. B isn't. Unfortunately, you're right. Hey, Kurt, I think we're going to have to leave it there, my friend. But uh, I thank you very much for coming on the program. Actually, I've got one last question for you. Uh, um, you know, look, I mean, you, you, you've written a, a series of books. Uh, Crisis, I believe, is the, uh, the latest yeah. one. Uh, that that talks about and and explores the idea of this country that has been ripped apart when the leaders yeah. did not, uh, you know, uh, actually try to return us to a civil society. When when again this escalating cycle just continued. Yeah. Do you think that we can avoid that future? I mean, is, is it? Yeah. Uh, or, yeah? My, my books are a warning, not a how to, and and as further evidence of the problem where reason is being put aside. I write my books. I write, and you've read all of them. You read them before they come out. You know the preface where I'm saying, this is a warning. You know, my, one of my first memories was Gettysburg. I walked through Civil War battlefields in Kosovo. I mean, I'm not for this garbage. But it could happen because of human nature and foolish decisions. So let's not do it. This is a warning. It's entertaining. It's fun. There's shooting and jokes and things. But it, it's a warning. And I get these uh, 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 wads from the bulwark. It's like, you know, racist, fantasy of race war and race secession. And it's like, how can we have a debate where you flat out lie? So we're not talking about the issues. We're talking about, we're, we're just defending ourselves against freaking disgusting slander by people who frankly aren't fit to lick my combat boots. Uh, although some of them are kind of hefty and probably would, uh, you know, just for the calories. Um, it, 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 what's left when you take reason out? What is your option for expressing yourself when you take reason out? And, of course, if you believe you, the election system is uh, uh, unfair. What, what, what are your options? Well, you can go, yeah, I'll be a free since it was nice. Now I'm a serf. Oh, well, I'm going to watch Netflix. Uh, or you can get angry and you get progressively angrier. And eventually, it gets very, very bad, particularly if the authorities keep ratcheting things up. That's a real possibility. I'm against it. I'm warning against it. But now, now the mere act of warning against it is now advocacy of it in the eyes of these idiots. And I don't even know where to go with that. Well, that, again, I mean, that gets back to part of the problem, right? In order to actually fix things, you got to have both sides willing to make a good faith effort and... Uh... I think we've got, you know, a lot of folks uh, on both sides, quite frankly, who are not there yet, if they're uh, yeah. going to get there at all. Kurt Schlichter, we're going to leave it there, my friend. But thank you so much for coming on the program, sir. It's good talking with you today. Appreciate Mr. Schlichter joining us on the program. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Alan Gottlieb, executive vice president and founder of the Second Amendment Foundation, uh, also was able to uh, join us on today's show to talk about the political impact of what happened on Wednesday on Capitol Hill particularly when it comes to our right to keep and bear arms and the increased challenges that we are likely to face as a result. Alan, thanks so much for coming on the program, sir. It's good talking with you today. Always my pleasure, Cam. So I want to just ask you a really open-ended question uh, to get started here. Um, what What is your takeaway? What are your thoughts about what we saw in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday? Well, obviously, it makes our job a bit harder uh, coming up with the battle for the right to keep and bear arms. You know, violence doesn't doesn't ever help us out, especially when they're, you know when there's shooting and uh, and uh, people you know destroying property. Uh, so I'm not exactly happy about what took place. Uh, it makes my job a lot harder defending gun rights coming up, and I think it puts gun rights more in position that the opponents of the Second Amendment are going to attack it that much harder and that much quicker. 
I think you're right about that. Uh, and, and that is a concern um, for those of us who believe that the political process is still going to continue. Um, you know, and unfortunately, I think that there are a lot of folks who who I agree with. I mean, I you know, if we sat down and had a conversation, I'd agree with probably 80, 90 percent of uh, what we have to say. But but they're to the point where they believe the political process is so corrupt. Uh, it is so broken uh, that they have no faith in the political process going forward. Uh, and, and, you know, I've had these conversations online with folks who I don't really care if it makes our job harder uh, because there's no chance of success anyway. What would you tell those folks who are ready to give up, who say there's no point in in uh, engaging in the political system anymore because it's so irrevocably broken? Well, I think the system is broken. There are problems. I agree with a lot of that frustration. But the problem is that's what the other side wants us to do is to drop out and say, hey, we can't win, battle's over, and just give up, and then gives them a, a clear playing field. Uh, that's what we can't do. That's what they've been trying to do for a number of years, you know, demonize us, destroy us, make us, you know, you, you know deplorable, calling us deplorables and murderers and everything else. They're trying to make it so unsavory to support gun rights that, you know, we drop out. And that's what we cannot do uh, and we must not do. And to that end, I know that the uh, Second Amendment Foundation is actually going to be working really hard in 2021 to to grow its ranks and to grow the ranks of Second Amendment activists. As you say, that job may be a little bit harder, but it is um, uh, more important than ever, I, I think, frankly, to uh, to ensure that our rights remain strong. So what is the Second Amendment Foundation uh, uh, doing uh, and what do you all plan to do over the next few months to uh, to, again, increase the number of Second Amendment advocates in this country? Well, one thing we've done is we signed a contract with Brad Parscale and that's Parscale Strategies, uh, his firm. Uh, he was, you know, the campaign manager for Alfred Trump and did all the digital marketing for the Trump campaign, turning out all the people at the rallies and, uh, you know, all, all the Internet advertising and, and everything on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, uh, he's, he's a master at finding our people and organizing and mobilizing them. And we brought him to come to work for us uh, to extend our Second Amendment First Responders Program and our Second Amendment Family Project and a Winning Firearms Freedom One Lawsuit at a Time Project. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, he's a master at building databases, and, you know, and, and organizing people and getting people engaged and involved. And so all that strength, uh, you know, which pretty much was the backbone of the Trump campaigns, uh, the winning one and the one that didn't do so well, uh, he's going to bring all that with him and be working for the Second Amendment Foundation. And we're really kind of excited about that. It's what gives us on, when it comes to new media marketing, it gives us the gorilla on the block, so to speak. And I'm really glad that he's on our side. Absolutely. And that's going to be important because I remember the last time you and I talked, um, you know, you had cautioned me because uh, I said something about, you know, well, even if the Democrats win both of these Georgia seats, uh, you know, it's going to be 50-50 Kamala Harris. Well, you know, I, I had sort of uh, downplayed the thought of and the prospect of uh, a gun control legislation passing out of the Senate. Uh, and you said, well, hang on a second. <laughs> and you, I remember you telling me, you know, there are some moderate Republicans. We, we do need to be concerned about uh, the prospect of gun control making it through the Senate. Uh, on a bipartisan basis, uh, if the Democrats are in control of that chamber, and it looks like that's going to be the case here, so uh, you know there 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 is um, the potential here, the real potential, uh, and I think it has been aggravated by what happened yesterday that there is going to be a a push for gun control in Congress, and gun owners are going to need to be involved. We are going to need to be engaged. We're going to have to uh, be a part of this effort to uh, to keep our rights intact. As you say, we can't just sit this out and throw up our hands in disgust. That's absolutely right. And it's important that every gun owner get engaged and join every gun group that's out there, national and local. It's important that they, you know, they, they donate, they, or they get engaged with their elected officials now more than ever, because as you know, you know, a couple of years ago, we saw what happened in Virginia overnight. You can see that happening nationally now overnight. Uh, with, with gun control, a slew of gun control proposals moving forward. It, you know, and I, I, when I look at the playing field overall, in some of the red states, we're actually going to make some gains in, in gun rights legislation this coming year. Mm -hmm. In the blue states, we're going we're to lose. We have a, a problem on the national level now with that, you know, a very anti-gun administration. 
Uh, the Second Amendment Foundation, by the way, next week is launching a national TV campaign. Uh, we have 40 spots running nationally across various networks, Fox News, Fox Business, CNBC, M- even MSNBC, CNN, and Bloomberg. Uh, we have 40 national spots running next week to help organize people. We're asking them to uh, text 474747, just protect 2A to 474747, get involved and engaged and help us stop what's happening or potentially happening in Congress. Uh, and so again, for your listeners, that's protect 2A, text is 474747, and we have 40 national TV spots running next week alone. That is fantastic. Uh, and outside of, you know, the, 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 the legislative threat that we face, when you talk about that that uh, playing field of what it's going to look like uh, nationally, um, I think that you are still very uh, optimistic. I know I'm still very optimistic about the Supreme Court uh, weighing in on some Second Amendment challenges. There are going to be a number of cases uh, that will be presented to the court in the coming months. And and I really do believe that, uh, that we have a chance to um, secure more of our right to keep and bear arms through the Supreme Court this year. I fully agree, and of course, the Second Amendment Foundation has filed at this point a significant number of suits. I think by the end of last year, last year alone, we filed 27 cases. We have another very important case we're going to be filing in the next week or so, uh, which we'll talk more about. I can't talk about it yet until it's filed. Uh, but we're we're trying to you know place a number of cases in in the in the courts, move them up to the Supreme Court to cover a wide range of issues. Give the you know, again the court a cafeteria style approach to you know. A, Choosing a case, you know, from right right to carry cases to uh, so-called assault and bans to high capacity magazine bans to bans for 18, 20 year old young adults from being able to buy, purchase, use, or carry a firearm. Uh, we have a number of cases mo- moving on up, and I'm really kind of excited about it. That is good news, uh, and we're going to be watching those cases very, very closely. Alan Gottlieb with the Second Amendment Foundation, founder and executive vice president. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on the show today. My pleasure, Cam. Have a great day. All right, my thanks to both Alan Gottlieb and Kurt Slichter for joining me on the program today. Uh, you know, we, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we'll get, I promise you, I promise you, before long. I was going to say tomorrow, but I don't even know if it's going to be tomorrow. But before long, we'll get back to our uh, uh, armed citizen story, our recidivist report, our good deed of the day. I know we could probably use a, a good deed or two. Uh, On tomorrow's program, we're going to talk with uh, Virginia State Senator Amanda Chase. She is running for the Republican nomination for uh, governor in the state of Virginia. We spoke with Kirk Cox on the program not long ago. He's also running for governor in the state of Virginia. And I uh, would like to thank both of these candidates for giving me the opportunity as a Virginia voter to sit down and talk with them and ask the questions that I think Virginia voters, particularly those on the right, uh, want answers to. And so I'm looking forward to uh, this conversation. I think it'll be a, a good discussion. I encourage you to check that out tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, my final thought today, honestly, is the Second Amendment community has been, as long as I've been a part of it, a pretty big tent. We have our disagreements, obviously. I mean, Getting the Second Amendment community to work together sometimes is like herding cats because we're all believer. Well, the vast majority of us are, are believers in individualism, right? We care about our individual rights. We care about our individual liberties. We care about these things. And so we love to disagree with one another when we see, you know, whether it's, you know, the uh, our, our favorite type of firearm, whether it's the best you know caliber of ammo to use uh, or whether it's, you know, how far down this road are we? We have our disagreements, but we have always been able to come together in defense of our right to keep and bear arms. We are a Big Ten movement. And, you know, if I'm going to end on an optimistic note, and it's a small one, I'll be honest with you, it's a small one. But if I'm going to end on an optimistic note, it's that I do believe that the Second Amendment community and I know that the left, we're like, what are you talking about? This is ridiculous. Gun owners are going to tell us how to get along. You guys are the gun owners. Yeah. I think gun owners can actually provide an example to the rest of the country as to how people who disagree on any number of issues can get along when they are able to find some sort of common ground. Obviously, for us as gun owners, it's the Second Amendment. It's our shared right to keep and bear arms. It's not going to be that for everybody. But we do have the chance if folks are willing to look, uh, to be a beacon, 
to be an example of how you can get millions of Americans who don't march in lockstep with one another, but who can find a way to find some common ground for mutual benefit. That is how politics is supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to function. And it'll help our country function if we get there. And again, I would like to think that you and I and other Second Amendment activists have a role to play in actually teaching the rest of the country how to get along a little bit better than we have been. Small note of optimism. I might be fooling myself. I don't think so. But I'm willing to consider the possibility. All right. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Uh, I do appreciate you being a part of the program. I'm, By the way, I, I don't normally have a chance to do this, but tonight I am going to be reading the comments. I am. Because I want to know what you have to say. Whether you're telling me off or you're giving me a pat on the back, I want to hear from you. I don't just want you to hear from me. So we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free.